Mo Guzman and Juan Lopez Santini at the head of the field. The lights go out on the Honda Civic as they come into sunset. But we are about to get a burst of light and energy from all of this field as we get ready to go racing once again at the iconic Sebring circuit. IGT's race two, led by the R8s. Listen to that sound as the flag waves and away we go. Race two for IGT. Nathan Burke ducked out to the outside of driver's right, but it looks like Geronimo Guzman, Tom Pank, Steve Hammond side by side there. Again. Big <laughs> machine vodka spike coolers turn one, and it looks like Pank might have gotten Hammond. Yeah, actually, Pank got Juan Lopez Santini as well. And Hammond side by side going into turn three. Jonathan, look at these sights we're getting here. I know, fantastic overhead shots from the drone. And in a moment, we'll see the second group burn into life as they head down the main straight in the back of your shot there. We'll see them in a moment as they come into turn one. But a great start once again. Here we go. That's two by two through the first turn. Look at all the uh, spectators on the new bleachers there at the yeah, Machine cool, Vodka huh? Spike Coolers Turn 3. I and always I wonder why they don't have those there. Yeah, and it's a perfect place for it. Really great viewing. There's Bob Weiss in there in that orange car. There's Juan Gonzalez's son in that blue checkered car. We're going to have some great racing here at uh, Sebring Speed Tour. Out of Bridge Hall for the first time they come. The two Audis doing what they did in race one, pulling away at the front. Guzman out front ahead of Lopez Santini. Yeah, Juan Lopez ahead of Tom Pank. Tom Pank got by him there at uh, turn three, but now Tom Pank looks like he's fallen way back. I don't see him anywhere. So we're looking for Tom Pank, and I think the number 42 Ultra Performance Porsche, I still don't see him, and you can't miss him. He's that Dayglow Green Porsche as they come through Bishop Bend. Yeah, Rich Williams got a good start in the 008. Uh, as you mentioned, Hammond's up there, Neapol. Uh, Tuati in seventh now, Nathan Bird eighth, Scott Blind in ninth, Vento rounding out the top ten as they come down the long Ullman Strait one more time down towards sunset. Now, Irwin is saying, man, bumpy place needs some repave. And Irwin, ah. a lot of people would disagree. They love the bumps. you got to hashtag respect the bumps here at Sebring as we watch Stephen Hammond really using that suspension. When they get on this tarmac for Hendricks Airfield when they flew B-17s in World War II, that's what these big blocks are. And look at that. Juan Lopez Santini ducks on the inside. Whoa, and he has his nose cut off. That was good driving. And both of them at it. But yeah, to answer your question, th this has been a long debate here at Sebring for, well, over 50 years, 60 years, if you will. It opened in 1950, but it's always been this bumpy. And a lot of people say it would ruin the whole thing if they actually did resurface it completely because it's got such character because of the bumps. Yeah, and I'll tell you, they would lose a lot of business because a lot of teams from IndyCar to NASCAR to uh, uh, the... IMSA cars will test here and spend so much time testing here because they think if my car can last eight hours here, it'll easily do 24 hours of Lamar, 24 hours of Daytona. Yeah, I mean, Indy were here last week, in fact, uh, testing here before their race at St. Pete next week. So, Haman in third, Williams fourth, Tuati in fifth, blind up to six now, near pole seven, Fayan, Gonzalez, and Bird, your top ten. Good start from Gonzalez, in fact, in the 81 up to ninth place. Rowdy Ruffians calling me out for calling out uh, Irwin there for making that. They're fighting over here in the comment section about Sebring, and I think Ern Irwin was doing it in jest. And there is Juan Gonzalez coming through with that Mission Foods, that beautiful bell there, this tower turn. It, it is really fun to watch these cars just trying to rotate around this. There's 18 different surfaces here that your tires are going to come in contact in just one lap. Well, the drone really giving us uh, an aspect of how the field uh, spreads out as the race goes on. And we're only, what, a lap in, and already this field has massively spread out as they head towards 17. Uh-oh. Seeing a safety vehicle there. And uh -oh. that's, oh, Mark Matisse. Uh-oh. Mark Matisse, one of our fastest drivers from last year. Pass there. Oh, look at that. Nice The Stuttgart done. Cup. And that was a good pass too because it's not a usual place where the Ferraris coming out to the outside taking on the Porsches good to see into sunset they come
Man, International GT not disappointing here at the Sebring Never. Speed Tour. Two fantastic races. That is a long back straight there. Yeah, it does seem to go on forever. It's, it's not as long as it seems from this shot because we pick them up very early. That uh, sign in the background, obviously, quite some way, and the heat haze adds to it. But they're down it in, what, two or three seconds? Yeah, there's our Colin Cohen there and our Marinello Cup Norwood Auto Italia out of Dallas, Texas area. He's one of the OGs in International GT, so it's great to have Colin Cohen here. Mark Sandridge currently in 15th position in his GT4R. I'm getting roasted everywhere in these comments, Jonathan. I love it. What, what are they saying? <laughs> oh, rowdy ruffians uh, make fun of me for a, a bad call. Whoa! Somebody, somebody went onto the dust of dirt. You can just see it from the drone there, but uh, recovers well out of the exit of one. Well, we'll put all those comments to rest now because we have an adult in the room. <laughs> Okay, if we're 12, he's 13. You're an age, but I wouldn't say very mature. Okay. Hey, and I'll say this, look at this. Brady Berman has joined us in the comments watching the race. So yeah, that's kind of right. Yeah, should have been here, Brady. Uh, Brady, uh, you know, you had a trophy for you last night. Uh, I believe you were second place in 3.8 liter class. We wanted to recognize that. Wish you congratulations and wish you best of luck. And uh, hope we see you back at International GT sometime in the future. So questions that arose. Um, Geronimo Guzman, who I thought in the first race finished second behind Juan Lopez, but he started ahead of him. What, what's happening there? Uh, our, the way our program works is that qualifying, our best and look qualifying at this, though, session. I, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. Juan Lopez Santini ducking inside, ducking outside, all over his teammates' mirrors. This is great. So no team orders here, is there? No, no, that, that's it. Having good fun. But the way it goes is uh, qualifying. Best qualifying session of the two that we do qualifies you for race one and the enduro. All right, the wild card in the deal is the fastest time from race one, which gives you your grid position for race two. That's what so. It is. That's why. So you know, we just look at it and say, look, if you have a, a a bad race one, it doesn't ruin your whole weekend. You know, you're you know, and we're not going back to one qualifying. You know, you only got to get one good lap in, and uh, you know, even if you DNF, that lap counts and uh, puts you in a, a decent grid position for race two. So hard onto the brakes, into the bridge hole, Bennett turn seven, trying to get those cars to rotate. Those Audi R8s are just so well balanced. We've had some questions. How many Audi R8s would it take for you to make a class for these cars? Four. Four. All right. So just two more. Yeah, so that's like, All right, Ben, we're up. Yeah. You, you, you guys Team are ready? Sizzle. You guys are ready? Yeah. Well, yeah, as you know, and he may be ready to switch, uh, Tom Pank has two of them sitting, and he usually has one sitting in the trailer. So, um, you know, who knows? Uh, we might see Tom join the fray at some point. And Reg Williams, he kind of comes in and out and does the events that he likes to do, but a really fast driver. Tell everybody about Reg Williams. Yeah, he joins us. His home track is VIR. And, uh, you know, he goes back to doctoring in his, uh, you know, eye doctoring in his uh, real life. But, uh, yeah, quick driver, uh, great job with Goldcrest. Uh, many, uh, we have a number of cars from Goldcrest here prepped. And, uh, you know, really quick, good car, and uh, it's usually in the top five. All right, so it looks like Juan Lopez Santini still behind Geronimo Guzman, followed by Stephen Hammond. And another great battle between Steve Hammond and Reg Williams. Not sure what happened to Tom Pank there. Tom Pank for a while. Uh, took over Juan Lopez Santini at turn three and then we didn't see him anymore. I wonder if, you know, Tom complained about very high uh, engine temps, uh, oil temps after race one. As a matter of fact, that's why he eased out just a little bit, which gave the advantage to Steve, Stephen Hammond. And uh, I wonder if that, that problem and that high oil temp really didn't rear its ugly head. So, uh, you know, that could have been, so not a total surprise. Now, Rowdy Ruffian is saying, hold on, the second is a 2019 Evo. So on my timing and scoring sheet, Geronimo's in a 2015 Audi R8 LMS GT3 Evo, and Juan Lopez Santini's in a 2016 Audi R8 LMS GT3. GT3 yeah. So I'm sure there's people on here in the comment section that can clear that up for us. And of course, a legitimate question you're going to ask is, what's the difference? And I have no freaking clue. All right, I'm a marketing <laughs> Thanks guy. Thanks for your honesty, Ken. Yeah, thank you. There you go. I could make it up, which I usually yeah. have done, um, but I won't this time. I'm going to leave it to my technical people. Yeah, or maybe some people in the comments sections know what that is, but that's for Zitza to decide, right? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. 
So David Tuwadi there. There's Leopold. And uh, Bob, Leopold. Bob Neopold is in a GT4R 2016. Having a great race with David Tuwadi. Were you asking about Tom Pank earlier? Yeah, I don't he, know where, what's happened to him. He's down in 51st place. Yeah, he's pulled okay. off. Yeah, he's pulled yeah. off. Yeah. He, and Mark he, he only got a couple laps off. in, and uh, he pulled off somewhere along on the track. Okay, our camera guys, if you're listening, they'd like to see the rear end of these Audis so they can tell what kind of cars they are there. Yeah. As we look, Mark Sandrich, another one of our OGs, is back with us in International GT. So cool to see him with Joe Party Vardy and Owen Trinkler. Never say never. They keep coming back. And Ken, I know you have a long, extensive history of coming to Sebring. We've had an argument here about you can't smooth out Sebring. No. The, the, no. Everybody would go crazy if you did or that. Or repave it and change the character forever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, as you know, uh, the big thing about it, and you know how many teams come here to test, and they test for 24-hour races, and they run four uh, on the test because they know if they can withstand a pounding flat out for four to six hours, we know we're good to go for, for elsewhere around the world. Because, uh, no, uh, you know, when Derek was in last night, he talked about the character of Sebring, you know, and uh, yeah. it has lots of character, and you can't take that away. The, the track has changed a number of times over the years. Uh, Configuration-wise, it was almost at one point, almost five miles. Um, at least there's no grass between the track anymore. You used to have to cut the grass and burn it between the two. Um, but uh, it's always interesting. Uh, you know, and then the advent for the 12-hour of lights, you know, that changed yeah. things pretty dramatically. Um, you know, I did a few drives here before they put lights in, and it is dark as can be out there. And um, I made the mistake of just following the guy in front of me because I yeah. thought he knew where he was going. And uh, next thing you know, I was looking at cows. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and... Uh, and the racetrack was over there, and uh, so we did a little tour and uh, out there, but we did make our way back onto the track and uh, you know find our way. But it was dark, dark, dark black. And that was What's the great. hardest corner? Look at this bridge hole bending corner. I always think of this as being the toughest, heaviest braking, but also a good overtake. But technically, what's the hardest for you? I don't know. They're they're, they're all different. Okay, I, th I think the key to success here, um, I, I think everybody will say, is and given the terrain which is uh, it is like off-road terrain is 17. Um, yeah. you know, you're leading on to yeah. the, the fast part of the racetrack there's so many bumps and undulations there and setting up to go into 17 is just absolute critical so we're over the halfway point now in this second igt race guzman and santini continuing to lead and the exhibition class pulling well ahead of the regulars. I see Nathan Bird on the in the in the top ten. The ten. Uh, he's been a busy boy this weekend, driving yep. a number of cars and uh, a very quick young driver. We have a number of young drivers, uh, you know, here. Uh, and we'd like to again congratulate. Speaking of young drivers, second generation Lucas Pank, who won uh, the championship last year. He hasn't had a good weekend. Uh, you know, he's he struggled and. Uh, you know, right out of the box. So it, it hasn't been stellar, but uh, he went home with a watch last night. So uh, from Detroit Watch Company, so not so bad. Mark Sandridge there in that Brumos Porsche. Beautiful car. So great to have him back. But you're right, Nathan Bird, Juan Gonzalez were going at it. And now there's James Hammond at the front end of a group here. And that's the great thing about International GT is there's so many different classes, so many people to race with, but with a field of what, 54 cars, you're always gonna find somebody to really go head to head with. Yeah, there should be somebody out there. You know, you were, so, you were saying, Ben, and I, I think I know why, you know, how you were so excited to see Mark Sandridge back, knowing that we'll be at Mid-Ohio and he'll actually bring the family out and cook the ribs from Sandridge Foods. And uh, I know I'm excited about that, uh, having those ribs uh, at Mid-Ohio. Yeah, yeah, one of the best, uh, the best nights of food that we'll have. So that's so much fun to have him out. And he just brings a great smile to the paddock as he makes a pass there on James Hammond, Stephen Hammond's dad. 
They laughed at me one time because I kept calling him Stephen Hammond's dad. <laughs> and as a dad, well, I know I know what that's like. Yeah. Well, last night we uh, he recognized. He said uh, Stephen Hammond's sponsor is what he yeah, called him. Okay. Exactly. And, uh, he promised that once uh, he's done with his medical school stint, that he will he, he will be able to pay him back. So he he's promised him that. Knowing Stephen, he'll hold true to his promise. Now this Stuttgart Cup is blowing up. The yeah. original vision of International GT, finally, about nine, ten years later, it's catching on. Yeah, you know, we had a good go run and go of it from a 2008 to 2012. The original concept was the Inner Series. Uh, Bill Riddell was heavily involved in that, and that's why he he came out, you know, and said, "Let's do the Stuttgart Cup." And uh, that was sponsored by a Chicago auto dealer Napleton, and uh, it ran its course uh, over four years, uh, culminating with a Cayman. Uh, Daytona 24-hour win, Shane Lewis in that car, uh, who's partnered up here with uh, Bill Riddell. And so, the, you know, with a Daytona win, it was kind of like, what else could we do? So at that, and uh, it just kind of went on the vine. But, you know, it was in 2008 when we brought that to, Porsche did not want to see the Cayman as a race car. Their race car was a 911, didn't want to know anything about, uh, you know, uh, the Cayman being a race car. But at the time, it was not selling that well, and they were very happy to sell 70 cars, as you can imagine, that were turned into race cars. So quietly, it took 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 note and took took really tech feel, and they, they looked at it, and it's such a great platform. And uh, you know, there's a Porsche series with Caymans now, you know, a number of them, and so you know, it's it's really a great way to go. Um, you know, a little easier car to drive than the 911 based cars, but still, lots of fun. And speaking of Juan Lopez Santini. Another one of our OGs has joined us in the comments. Rob Blake says, hi, Ken and Ben. Rob Blake, we miss having you out here, but you know that you're doing well when we've got 54 cars on track and we still have drivers at home watching. That's great. Fantastic. Good to hear from you, Rob. Uh, hope to see you back soon. You know, uh, I'm sure it's not easy for you to sit there as a spectator and watch these guys, especially when there's such good competition throughout the field and knowing that you could be one of them. But sometimes, you know, with business, this has to take a back seat, so we understand, but just love when they come back and, and race with us whenever they can. Yeah, and uh, we've seen that at numerous times. Mark Sanders is one. Mark said I, you know, I needed to go back as much as his, his sons and his family take care of uh, the major part of the business. He still needed to be involved and needed to go back. And uh, it's a, I remember one time during the COVID thing, I said, how you doing, Mark? He says, great. I'm in, uh, I'm out in the, he says, I'm out on the floor making potato salad. He said, that's yeah. what I'm doing, you know, so. Uh, you know, you do what you have to do when you're on your when you own your own business. That's what yeah. the entrepreneurial spirit is about. You know, sometimes uh, there's nothing to say. That's not my job. Well, there is Juan Lopez Santini getting the best of Geronimo Guzman, now leading in that exhibition class of the Audi R8s. As they come into the Bridge Hall Bennett Turn Seven, trying to get those Porsches to rotate. Here comes Juan Lopez Santini in that Audi, but he's got to be very aware of the fact that there's a great Stuttgart Cup battle happening just ahead of him, and he's probably not going to do anything until he knows that they can see him. Yeah, certainly uh, throughout sports car racing, that's the challenge, uh, dealing with traffic uh, and playing the chess game, uh, you know, and really that's what it should be. It's it's really, it's not... Uh, it's not rock'em sock'em robots, it's chess. And it's a thinking man's game of when the opportunity and setting up the opportunity to make a pass. Even if the car is only a few, you know, a few mile per hour slower, uh, the cornering speeds can be very similar. And that's the difficult part. Great shots of the cars coming down this basically three quarters of a mile long straightaway into Mission Foods turn 17. Uh, and basically it's just a horseshoe that goes all the way around. and. If, they, if the camera person will pan over, you'll see a little blue dot under the bridge that was put there by uh, Jim Pace, our good friend Jim Pace, with spray paint for Skippy Barber Racing School, and he says that's the smoothest way around. <laughs> it's not the best apex, but that's the smoothest way under that bridge, and I've got video of cars basically getting airborne going over those bumps. So as we pan here, look up on the bridge, you're gonna see a blue dot, and that is supposed to be the fastest way right there, there perfect is, yeah. there you go thank you camera yep. people i love really? it so that's a little uh, insight there that i probably shouldn't have given away yeah no, really now we'll keep trying it so rob blake let's hear from you is this hurting your feelings a little bit or do you like <laughs> watching your friend juan lopez santini leading the group here at sebring international raceway 
white flag is out. Last lap. Well, Ken, I got to say, two fantastic international GT races here at the Sebring Speed Tour. Huge field of cars. The growth is, is unbelievable. I know someday uh, we need to be making a documentary on how in the world did you and Bill Riddell and Julie do it. But uh, it's been unbelievable to, to see and uh, see the growth. And just I love, it seems like last night at the banquet, nobody are friends. They're all family. It's just a different like atmosphere in the international GT paddock that they're fierce competitors, but there's like a family vibe to it. Yeah, and uh, you know, we've tried to promote that. You know, you hear us say it numerous, numerous times. And uh, you know, uh, there, you know, this isn't for everyone. If it's not, you know, there are people that want, you know, a, a little more uh, racing with a more of an edge, okay? And that's not us, you know. Uh, we have good racing, but I'm not saying we're the edgiest racing, you know, out there. And uh, you know, uh, the, our goal is that they, they all go home in one piece, you know, and rub and ain't racing and all that that you hear. But uh, we're very thankful because it does put on a good show. And these guys are driving hard. And I, I've had a, there's a couple of drivers here that have said to me, he said, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm just going to run on the SBRA side this weekend, Ken. He said, because your, your guys are so fast. He said, uh, you know, they're good drivers. They said, nothing wrong. He said, but, you know, I'm just going to take it easy and, uh, you know, not enter. But I'll be back. So it's yeah. all good. You know, uh, as I said, we, we look for good drivers. I'm very happy they have professional coaches. They take it seriously. Uh, they're trying well, on, to let me interrupt you because it looks like we're coming around. Juan Lopez Santini, two there in a is. row for him, followed by Geronimo Guzman. But yeah, yeah like Pippa Man. Yeah. You know, she's out there in the paddock coaching. I saw Guy Cosmo in the nice paddock. You Shane got, Lewis is here. Uh, you know, Owen yeah. Trinkler. Yeah. Owens, yeah. yeah. Shane yeah. Lewis. So it's, you've got some huge names out there coaching some of these drivers. Yeah. Spencer Pompelli. And while we got a moment, I'd, I'd like to thank our, our new sponsors, uh, Fixie Wheels, who came on uh, last year, is back with us this year. Uh, Detroit Watch Company, as I mentioned, really happy to have them. Uh, the Renault Group is, is uh, sponsoring and giving away that, that trip to Sheraton, Costa Rica, uh, the, in, in Costa Rica, in, you know, uh, for our winners. Fantastic to have them. Plus, uh, Stand 21, you know, the premier uh, safety equipment company in the world. Uh, very happy to have them. And our regulars, you know, Snoco Race Fuels, Interlake and Pirelli, Mission Foods, Speedcom Communications, you know, all a great group. And, uh, many, you know, the, the good news is, as you know, we've had many of them since the beginning, since 10 years, and uh, they've stayed with us, and we're very happy to have that. Well, that is awesome. As you see a helicopter fly over, and uh, beautiful days here at Sebring International Raceway. I hope that helicopter was aware of our drone. And here are the results. So Juan Lopez Santini in first, Geronimo Guzman second. Stephen Hammond, another great run for him in battle with Reg Williams, Bob Neopole, David Tuwadi just letting Stephen Hammond walk all over <laughs> him today. TLM Racing, followed by Scott Blind in seventh. Juan Fayen doing really well in a Porsche. It seems like he's just wanting to yeah, drive a little bit of everything. Yeah, maybe another championship in his future. Uh, yeah. He won the Maranello Cup uh, in, in kind of a gimme, so to speak, because a lot, a lot of competition there. We'd love to have more Ferraris out here running, but nonetheless, he won the, the, the championship fair and square, so now he's in the Mission Foods GT3 Cup. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, and then Nathan Bird, great showing for Nathan Bird, and then David Harrington rounds it out. So, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for this, but stay tuned because we're going to have Group 10 GT up next at the Sebring Speed Tour.